All right. The LS Bronco 2. We're not done. We got issues. We got fixes. Stay tuned. Okay, so you saw in the last video, or hopefully you did. If not, go back. There's two different videos of my friend Jeff's LS-powered Bronco 2 that was mostly built by Dan Bastion at Build It, Wheel It, Explore It. Uh, go check that out if you want to see the full build of this truck, all the suspension and everything. Um, I've got it up and running finally. The truck moves under its own power. Um, in the last video, um, I took it for a little drive around my house, literally. Uh, it didn't have reverse. It turns out it was just four quarts low on fluid. So topped off the trans. It actually works. But the motor runs terrible. Um, found some issues with it in the, the last video. You can cl clearly hear it. Truck had a really bad misfire. Just using a... Uh, infrared temperature gun, I had determined that both cylinders seven and eight, the back two cylinders, dead cold. Uh, they were showing 200 degrees, all the other cylinders, except for, uh, I guess it would be number one. Um, it was a little cold. It would get up to like 300 degrees, uh, but all the rest were like 500 on the primary tube of the header when I probed them. So there was something going on. I swapped some coil packs around to see if the problem would follow the coil pack or stay in the hole in the cylinder number. And it, it didn't, the problem didn't follow the coil. So I knew that tells me that, well, especially after checking the plugs, uh, I determined that the misfire is because there is no uh, fuel getting to the back two cylinders. So I pulled the plugs out, confirmed, yes, the back two cylinders, the plugs look brand new. They don't look like they've ever fired. So got a fueling issue. So uh, I talked to Jeff, and after I pulled the fuel rail off, took some fuel injectors over to my table, tappy, tappy, tap on the table, and just crap falls out of the injectors. So who knows? Don't know the condition of this motor uh, when Jeff got it. So... I mean, this motor could have been running like that before it was pulled out of the donor vehicle. You just don't know. So anyway, I bought a kit of AC Delco coil packs and some stock injectors. So we're going to go ahead and freshen up the ignition. I have already um, got brand new Taylor wires, some uh, heat-proof boots for the plug wires, and it's got a, a NGK Iridium plugs in it, brand new. So we'll put all those in and pray that the misfire goes away. Problem number two was the truck would overheat really quick. Within a matter of two minutes, the engine was at 230, 240 degrees. I'm getting zero coolant circulation through any of the, any of the hoses. On the Holly dash, which I still have to show you, that is now operational. Um, it would show the temperature is up to 230 degrees, the engine's hot, but yet I have no coolant flow. I can put my finger in the radiator and the, the coolant is ice cold, not even the heater core. I am, I'm not an LS guy, not exactly sure how the coolant flows on an LS, I'm a Ford guy, but I have a suspicion that it might just be airlocked because while it's running, we had a constant uh, bubble with the uh, radiator cap off, you could see just, you know, bloop, 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 bloop. At first I thought it was a blown head gasket the way the coolant temp would skyrocket so quickly. Now after thinking about it because of where the location of the heater core is, it is definitely higher than the radiator cap. I think it's airlocked. So um, I'm gonna use a vacuum tester. I'll basically I'll pull a vacuum on the entire cooling system, number one. That'll tell me if it does have a bad head gasket and if it doesn't, number two, then that will get me a full fill. Once I put a vacuum on the cooling system, it'll suck all the fluid in, and I know there's no chance for an air pocket. Just to be safe, I am going to throw a new, because we don't know the condition again, uh, I have a brand new thermostat assembly. 
I'm going to go ahead and drain the coolant out. I'm going to replace this. So coolant, or I'm sorry, thermostat, injectors, coil packs. That should get this thing back up and running tip top, I pray. And then uh, that's it. So anyway, let me, uh, let me show you what I got. Okay, so here are the spark plugs that I pulled out. The two on the right are number seven and eight. So you can clearly see there was uh, nobody was home. Nothing was going on there in seven and eight. And the rest of them are pretty sooty. So I would imagine um, that probably threw the computer a loop here trying to get this thing dialed in with two dead cylinders. So I pulled the fuel injectors out. I've already done this a couple times, but see the table's nice and clean here, but. Yeah, nothing. Well, yeah, a little bit of crap came out. The first, the first couple times I did that, I mean, I just, I could not believe the screens are just completely plugged inside these injectors. Just full of crap. So I'm going to go ahead and rip all these injectors out, clean out the rail, blow it all out. And then we have brand new injectors and brand new coil packs. So I'll get all these installed, get it back together. And hopefully this thing will run like it's supposed to. All right, I got all the stock injectors out of the original fuel rail. Cleaned it all out with brake clean. Blew it out with some compressed air so I know there's nothing left inside this rail. So that's clean. Got the new injectors. I'll use some Vaseline on the O-rings. Pop these all again, or pop these all in. Give you new clips. That's cool. And then um, I think then I'll do the coils. I'll get all the coil packs changed. I already put the spark plugs back in. Uh, change the coil packs, get the plug wires hooked back up, and then I can go ahead and pop this on. Four bolts and then one fuel line. And uh, that's done. I got the cooling system draining right now. Then I'll knock out the thermostat, get that all refilled, and then um, we're moving on. We're going to get this thing running here. Okay, back here at the motor. Thermostat is now done. We got all the coil packs replaced. Plug wires are back on. Plugs are all back in, obviously. These were not the original coils. These were some other aftermarket coils. So they had been changed once before for sure. Now it's got original AC Delcos in it. So I got the... Fuel injectors in the rail, so I'm gonna bring it over here, slap it on, and then we'll test it for fuel leaks. All right, I got the fuel rail all ready to go back on. I Vaselined up the O-rings for the intake. Now, just gotta get this all back in. Remember how I did the injector harness? Let me get these out of the way. So that's all done. Fuel rail is bolted down. Now I just got to plug in the injectors. So all the new injectors are now plugged in. Fuel system is hooked back up. Fuel line back there to the rail. So that's all back together. So now we can go ahead and take care of the cooling system. Okay, now I have the vacuum tester set up on the radiator. Air hose hooked to it. It's going to open this up. It's going to draw a vacuum inside the entire cooling system. Then I can watch this gauge and see if it has a leak down. If it holds vacuum, then I know cooling system's good and the head gaskets are good. If it does not hold, then I know we have a problem somewhere. So, all right, hold your ears.
Okay. We got a problem. It's picking up coolant. I may need to get this a little bit tighter. Yeah, I just had to get the uh, fitting in the radiator a little bit better. So, nope, yep, down to negative 15 inches of vacuum. Seventeen, twenty, and looks like we are at twenty three. And uh, is slowly dropping, unfortunately. I mean, it could be could be sucking a little bit around the cap. And it's down to twenty now. That's not what I was hoping to see. Hmm. 19 inches. All right, I'm going to let this sit here, and I'm going to see how long this takes, see how far it goes. All right, looks like it stabilized around 15 inches of vacuum. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it back up. I'm going to draw it back down to over 20. I got my 5-gallon bucket here with a 50-50 mix of antifreeze. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to let it fill the system. That way I know it's filled. And then from there, once uh, I fire it up, I can see uh, if it circulates and this thing overheats anymore. So let me drop this back down again. It's 20 inches. All right, I'm going to close that off. Put my pickup tube down in the coolant and open it. Here it goes. You can hear it drawing in. Taking about half this five gallon bucket already. Still going 12 inches of vacuum. She's still sucking. Ten inches, still going. Hopefully this will get all the air pockets out of the motor, out of the heater core. Now we're down to six inches of vacuum. She's still drawing in. Come on, take it all. There it is. Yes, that's it. Let's close. Let me, uh, oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Let's see how we did. Loosen this up. 
pull it out. Damn, right to the top. Okay. Cooling system is full. Okay, so the cooling system is now completely full. Should be burped of all air. We have the new coil packs on. We have the new fuel injectors in. So uh, should start. And that miss should be completely gone. So let's hit the key. See what we got. Fuel system is primed. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Nice and smooth. 12.4 AFRs. 39 pounds of oil pressure. Let's give it a little rev here, see what it sounds like. That is a hundred percent better. Let me see if the microphone will pick up the sound out of the tailpipe. I know it didn't before. Yeah, that sounds good. Nice and smooth. I like it. So finally, here is the Holly Dash. Don't have all the, the layouts exactly figured out. I know I may have to consult with Jeff to see how he wants this. Um, I know that one, I believe, is supposed to be gear indication. I thought, I don't know if that's supposed to say park or not, but uh, 97, 99, I believe that's water temperature. So we're going to watch and see how that does this time. Hopefully, the uh, cooling system opens up. Actually, I'm going to turn on the heat as well. And uh, let's see here. Panel. Let's see what we got for heat. Okay. Ice cold right now. All right. I'm going to go check the cooling system. Purrs like a kitten. Okay. She is now fully burped. Idling good. Sounds nice and smooth. Got the heat, man, it is blasting heat in here. There she's idling steady. Water temp, just under 200 degrees now. Oil pressure, 30 pounds hot. AFR is high 13s. I like it. I like it a lot. Heck yeah, man. We're good. Air pockets are gone. Cooling system is circulating. And there it is. Heater hoses, nice and hot. Oh shit, yeah, damn. She good. I don't know if this. That is just so tame, nice and quiet. I like it. All right. Well, that handles that. Go ahead and kill it. All right. Let's 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 try this one more time, but with a different microphone and see if this sounds any different. The truck's been sitting for a little bit. right up. It's kind of rattling noise at all. 
I'm not sure exactly what that is or where it's coming from. Sounds better on this mic. Sounds so good though. Thank you, Mr. Gamble, by the way. Okay, so the next part of the project is the transfer case shifter. Currently, there is no transfer case shifter, and Jeff's request was he had the original shifter out of the Chevy Silverado and wanted to see if I could make that work in this truck. I'm going to do what I can, see if I can make this look right. I just hate, I'm going to have to cut a hole in the dry shaft tunnel or the transmission tunnel. And uh, I'm hoping I don't have to go back and fill it in later. But let me, let me show you what I got to work with here. So there's the transmission shifter. And I think Dan built a block off plate, the original hole. So, oh boy, I need some light in here. This shifter, I got a couple of them here, designed to sit right on the side of the transmission tunnel. There's the arm that hangs down. So this is gonna go, I need to basically cut a hole in the side of that tunnel for that to fit there. And once I have that in position, I have this. I said I have Send me two, two different shifters. This would be the um, console that goes, that would go over top of this. The shifter would stick up through there. There's the thing for the shifter. It had some lights in it. This little, uh, some broken plastic here. Let's see what I can do with that. But this is what I got to work with. I'm going to see what I can come up with. Hopefully, I won't have to hack up the truck too bad. Worst case scenario, if I can't make this work, then we're going to have to go with a cable shifter from the aftermarket. But it would be cool to have this looking more OEM. So I'm going to give it a shot, see what I can come up with. Okay, after making a very precise, calculated guess, cut out. Piece of the tunnel and there's our hole. It sits in there pretty damn good actually. I can get three three bolts in it. And I took the little uh, console piece, cleaned it up. Painted it trim black, and just to get an idea, just gonna sit down a little something like that. So, uh, yeah, so far it looks pretty good. So there it is. Got the screws in it. Shift knob is on. Obviously, there's no linkage hooked up to the T-case yet. Looks pretty good. I got a, had to make a little bracket for the other side because there was just nothing there to attach it like it was in the Chevy. Let me show you that. So on this side, there's a, there's a screw right here that goes into the, the shifter mechanism. And then up here, there was a hole that there was nothing to attach it to, so I just made this little bracket. Shot that down on the floor, so that's mounted to that. So there we go. Got the little uh, four-wheel drive thing in there. The rest of this piece here was broken. So, um, I don't know. 
get creative, come up with some ideas on how to market. I need to make sure the shift pattern is the same. Um, I don't know if this linkage does uh, in, in the Chevy, if it does like a change of direction. I don't know. So I'm going to get the linkage hooked up. It's really, it's going to be real easy. Just one little linkage from the bottom of this to the T case. So hopefully it works. Well, I guess it really won't matter. It's either going to be uh, four high, two high, neutral, and four low, or it's going to be the exact opposite. It'll be four high, two high, neutral, and four low. It's going to be one or the other. Either either one, I guess, would be fine, really. All right, hopefully this turns out okay. So underneath the truck for the shifter, right here, that's the shift lever for the T-case. It's got a little nylon bushing in it. And then, let's see here. There we go. There's a T-case shifter to the floor. Let me focus. So, I gotta pull the shifter back out. This bushing, I need to flip it around and I need to straighten this out a little bit more so it's a straighter shot. I took a measurement, I have a shifter rod that will span the distance. I actually need to cut it down a little bit shorter. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that down. I'm going to go ahead and bend that, flip-flop that bushing around, and I pray that's all it needs. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's go do that. So here's the lever linkage I'm going to use. Needed to cut three inches out of it, so I did that. Go ahead and re-weld re it up like that. I have a little bit of adjustability in there to get the shifter handle dialed in exactly where I want it. And then the shifter itself, I went ahead, straightened that bottom piece out just a little bit, and then I flip-flopped that bushing around the opposite way. So shifter should be good to go. I'm going to go ahead, weld this up, give it a minute to cool, and then we'll throw it all in and see how it works. All right, one rod shortened three inches. All right, I'm going to go ahead and lube up both of these ends where they snap into the bushings. And let's go try it. All right, there is the linkage. Everything's hooked up on both ends. Everything fits really good. Everything's clear of everything. So. Let's go up and check the shifter operation, make sure that does what it's supposed to. And then if it does, I'll throw this front and dry shaft back in, and that is a wrap. Okay, here we go. Inside the truck, we are in two high, four high, two high, neutral, or low. Bam. Chevy Silverado TK shifter. Done. Bam. Look at that. All right. Let's button this up. All right. I think we're done. Just finished getting the dash display all set up and programmed. It was really cool. I'll show you that here in a second. But. That should conclude this. We have the transfer case shifter is now operational, just like Jeff wanted with the uh, Chevy 1500 factory shifter. Everything works. Um, cooling system's good. Everything's burped. I'm not finding no leaks. Um, the heat works really good. Um, probably tomorrow I'm going to take it out and take it for a little lap up and down the driveway, maybe out back in my property. I just want to make sure the transmission has all its gears. But uh, yeah, very exciting. Let's uh, let's take a look at this dash, and that's going to wrap this up. All right, here we are again. The new dash layout turned out pretty cool. Gives Jeff a lot of options as far as putting in some switch panels right here. Put one here. Put more switches there. But this Holly dash, wow. Uh, buddy Eric just left. Was here for a while getting this all set up. I am amazed. This is my first Holly EFI install. I'm amazed at this system, all the stuff that it can do, 
all the things it can monitor. The setup is uh, gets pretty in-depth for sure. I could see one spending hours in here just messing with going through menus and checking stuff and changing things. And so um, I didn't bother to film any of that because I could have made probably a 20 minute video just on that alone. So anyway, this is the finished product. Eon. Boot up. And we went for a uh, what we thought was an era appropriate gauge layout. And there it is. So we have the speedometer. It's got, you know, analog and a little digital readout. It's got the tachometer. We programmed, we set it up for an odometer so Jeff can keep track. This is a brand new build, so he'll know exactly how many miles are on the truck. We got monitor voltage, um, water temp, oil pressure, and uh, what is that? Oh, AFR. The uh, fuel gauge. I, I got to put more fuel in it. I just pretty sure the gas gauge is just there's. I think there's only maybe like a gallon and a half, two gallons in this. I think it might be just lower than what the sending unit can pick up, so it shows zero. So I'm gonna fill it up tomorrow. But we added. Turn signals, we added a bright light indicator. Let me fire this up. So you can see AFR, oil pressure, battery voltage charging, water temp. I kind of like those scales. Uh, pretty cool. Speedometer is GPS. So that'll always be right, but uh, we have turn signal left, turn signal right. Uh, so uh, yeah, pretty uh, pretty damn cool here. Digging it. So that's a wrap for this. All right, that's gonna complete the LS Bronco Two. My uh, my stuff is done. So the only thing left is for Jeff to come pick it up. I can't wait to see him get this in his hands. Jeff's got a lot more work to do on this truck. I know he said he's got bumpers, winch, front and rear. I don't know if he's doing his tire carrier. Um, a whole new interior for this truck, which is going to look really cool. So um, got to get it back to Jeff. So he has the next few months to do everything he needs to do to finish it up. Also, he has the original hood. This is just one, an extra one I had I threw on. So, uh, yeah, really looking forward to seeing what Jeff does to finish this thing up. And then hopefully come springtime, Jeff will bring it back. And then we still have to dial in the suspension, the, the ORIs. Um, that'll go back to Dan at Build It, Wheel It, Explore It and get the, uh, get the ride height, everything set up in the suspension. Probably have to do a little bit of brake bias adjusting because there's a lot more weight yet to go on the truck. So we'll let Jeff finish what he needs to do, we'll bring it back, and then we'll get everything else dialed in. So again, cool build. Don't forget, if you uh, haven't seen all the previous videos, go to Build It, Wheel It, Explore It on YouTube, and you can see the full build of everything, the, the chassis, the suspension, all of that stuff. Um, it's a really cool build series. Uh, it's a really cool, very unique truck. And then um, this would be, I guess, video three on my channel of just finishing up the last few things, getting it up and running. So if you made it this far in the video, thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed seeing something different on the channel. And um, hopefully uh, in the future we'll get some video of this thing actually wheeling with us. So that would be really cool. So anyway, thanks. Like, share, subscribe. We'll see you on the next one. Bye.